clever waste disposal. That may be the dream, but not all waste can be treated equally. Take oil spills for instance. They are the ultimate environmental signature. If pollution from pipelines and wells isn't dealt with quickly, the damage done is often irreversible. Plants and animals suffocate and die, and groundwater can be contaminated, putting human lives at risk. Yes, NT, that's right. And that is why it's nice to hear some good news coming out of Germany. Quite by chance, a chemical company there developed a cotton-like substance that can absorb seven times its weight in oil. And not just one time, but over and over again. Let's find out more about what is being billed as magic cotton. Even traces of diesel are enough to pollute wide areas of soil or entire bodies of water, whether it leaks from a tank or is swept out in floodwaters. But this wadding can help. It soaks up the fuel within seconds. And the wadding continues to float conveniently on the surface even when it's saturated. It makes the diesel easy to mop up and leaves little residue. You shouldn't necessarily drink this water right now because there could still be traces left in it, but it could be recycled through a water treatment plant for industrial use without any problem. The Doirex oil wadding was actually created by chance. The Saxony-based company normally produces waxes and solvents for industry. But during the production process, a mistake caused the machinery to extrude an unplanned substance, a wax in the form of wadding. The developers quickly realized that the unexpected material had a very special fibrous structure. It has very impressive absorbent characteristics, and when it absorbs oil, the material clumps and it can be handled very easily. A kilo of it can absorb roughly six and a half liters of oil, so I don't need much of it at all. The NGO One Earth, One Ocean has tested the new wadding in Nigeria. Oil often leaks straight from badly maintained pipelines into the soil there. And tease it out, and oil is coming out. And you do this, little bit this, and you put it again, you can, so you can use it. The wadding has caught the eye of multinational oil corporations. Environmentalist Günther Bonin also sees a growing market for it in Germany. It offers economic advantages over granulate oil absorbents. I can use it on a polluted surface, say a lake with an oil coating, and then afterwards retrieve it, squeeze it out, and use it again. That's why it's ingenious, because I can reuse it over and over. In countries like Nigeria, we've developed or converted special presses that are able to wring out up to 300 liters of oil. The company's wadding is already regularly deployed in Germany. The country's Coast Guard uses it, as do fire brigades during flooding events. Depending on where it's to be used, the wadding can be integrated into different forms. Sometimes cushion-shaped absorbers are most effective. In other circumstances, tubes might be a better choice. It's extremely important because when oil is floating down a river, you can't just dump the material on it because then you have no more control over it. You have to approach things in the light of the operational requirements and make things like barriers, for instance, out of floating tubes. Or if a diesel tanker breaks down on the road and fuel is leaking out, you might have to plug up drains. Or if there's some spillage at a company, a cloth form might be best to wipe the oil up quickly and effectively. So, an unintended production mistake has turned into a big boon for the environment. Doirex now exports its oil absorbent wadding to 14 countries in all, among them Israel, Indonesia, and the United States. Human migration has been taking place since people began to roam the earth. And when they go, they don't go empty handed. Sometimes they inadvertently introduce bacteria, plants and animals to other regions of the world. These invasive species, as they are called, often thrive in their new environment and in the worst cases upset the natural balance. The consequences can be devastating. Cape Town here in South Africa 
is known for its unique biodiversity. But here too, invasive plants are encroaching on areas in and around the city. Now, a government initiative called Working for Water has come up with an idea to put some of them to good use. They look beautiful, but these trees are a major problem for South Africa. And that's why they have to be felled. What might look like wanton destruction is in fact helping indigenous flora. Alien invasion trees like eucalyptus from Australia wreak havoc on the ecosystem, explains evil masters. They have no natural enemies here, so they grow rapidly, very quickly. And what, uh, especially these eucalyptuses that you see behind me as well, um, they the three-year-old trees can absorb up to 90 liters of water a day, where the full-grown trees can take a, close to a thousand liters a day of water. The effects are huge. So you can see the, the river, and you can see the water line where the rivers are supposed to be and where the water actually is. And that's due to a lot of these trees absorbing a lot of the water. It's a massive problem for the drought-stricken country and not the only one caused by invasive plant species. There are about 200 of them in South Africa. They compete with indigenous plants, cause erosion, and intensify the impact of wildfires with devastating effects on flora, fauna, and humans. So there's reason enough for Ivo and his team to cut down the unwanted trees. It's a tough job. It will take the crew a year and a half to clear this 50 hectare piece of land, and that doesn't include the follow up. The clearing action is part of Working for Water, a program run by the country's Department of Environmental Affairs. It provides jobs and skills training to unemployed people, and it makes use of the trees. The journey of the felt eucalyptus doesn't end here. On site, the trunks are cut into smaller lengths. Next stop, the program's own wood mill in the nearby town of George. Here, the trunks are sawn into planks. To date, 3.2 million hectares of alien invasive plants have been cleared by the Working for Water program. Mill manager and mill hop shows the real money spinner and the operation, the woodworking factory. Lodges, shelves, tables, chairs, benches, and even coffins. A wide range of furniture is produced here and sold to retailers and government departments. He stresses the program's holistic approach. We are removing this alien vegetation from the environment, getting biodiversity back to the way it should be, as well as using this biomass to make useful products and in training people. Countrywide, the program employs almost 40,000 people. The eucalyptus trees becomes part of the most important piece of furniture produced here, school desks. With only a few planks and screws, the workers manufacture sturdy desks out of invasive trees. State-run schools in South Africa are notoriously under-equipped. 700,000 learners have thus far received free desks through the program. Like in Gululetu, a township on the outskirts of Cape Town, the desks are in use here at the Mseki Primary School. The kids also seem to like their eco desks. It is so comfortable and I like to sit with my friends. Happy learners and fewer invasive trees, a useful end for the unwanted eucalyptus. We've come to the end of this edition of Eco at Africa, but we'll be back next week with more environmental ideas and initiatives from Africa and Europe. We hope you've enjoyed the show and we'll see you next time. For now, so long from Johannesburg. 
And don't forget, if you want to know more, visit our website or check us out on our social media platforms. We appreciate your feedback and comments. So until next edition of Eco at Africa, thanks for watching and bye-bye from the Conservation Foundation in Nigeria.